I'm Robert Bruce Thompson. This is the Home Scientist video series brought to you by Makershed. This is the second of six segments in which we'll show you how to use various methods to reveal latent fingerprints. In the first segment, we looked at iodine fuming, the oldest method and one of the primary methods used even today. In this segment, we'll look at ninhydrin development, another of the primary methods. For the first 60 years after fingerprints began to be used forensically, only three methods were used to visualize latent fingerprints, dusting, iodine fuming, and silver nitrate development. In 1954, forensic scientists added a fourth method to their arsenal. They began using ninhydrin, a chemical that reacts with the amino acids present in fingerprint residues, to produce an intense dye called Rumen's purple. Ninhydrin reagent is now a standard part of any fingerprinting kit. At its simplest, ninhydrin development requires only a spray container of ninhydrin solution. After the solution is sprayed on the paper or other porous material, any latent fingerprints present on the surface gradually develop as purple stains. The process can be accelerated by applying heat and moisture, usually with an ordinary steam iron, and light or low contrast prints can be retreated with ninhydrin or with plain solvent to intensify them. Real forensic technicians usually use disposable spray cans of ninhydrin solution. We'll use a fingertip sprayer from the drugstore with the ninhydrin solution included in the Makershed Forensic Latent Fingerprints Kit, FORKD. Be careful with this solution, incidentally. It's flammable, so avoid open flames or any other ignition source. Also, just as ninhydrin stains latent fingerprints an indelible purple, it will also stain your skin. Wear gloves and don't let the solution contact any surface you don't want to be stained. Before you get started, put down newspapers or plastic sheeting to protect the work surface. Wear gloves and protective clothing to avoid stains. Transfer the ninhydrin solution to a fingertip sprayer. I'm using a sprayer that uh, Walgreens sells for something like three for a buck. I'll discard it after use, but if you want to recycle yours, transfer any leftover ninhydrin solution back into the original bottle and rinse the sprayer thoroughly with tap water. Run some water through the tube and the sprayer tip, otherwise the acetone-based solution may soften the plastic. If you don't have the kit, you can make up your own ninhydrin solution. There are many formulations, but the one we're using is 0.6 weight to volume ninhydrin and acetone. Ninhydrin is available from many lab suppliers, including Makershed, HMS Beagle, and Elemental Scientific, usually by the gram. You can weigh out 0.6 grams of ninhydrin and dissolve it in 100 milliliters of acetone. If you buy one gram, you can simply dissolve it in about 167 milliliters of acetone to produce a 0.6% solution. I've produced a good specimen by wiping my fingers against my forehead to transfer lots of skin oils and then pressed my fingertips against this blank sheet of paper. Spray the ninhydrin solution onto the sheet of paper. You just want to mist it. You don't need to drench it and as long as it's damp, that's all we need. Okay, once that's done, allow it to dry. Um, as you can see, nothing much has happened. That's because at room temperature, the reaction between ninhydrin and the amino acids in fingerprint residues takes anything from an hour or two to maybe a day or more to produce sufficient rumen's purple to, for visible stains to appear. If you have time, it's best to develop at room temperature. The resulting prints will be sharper and have higher contrast. Okay, the prints have been developing for about an hour. I don't know if it's visible on the video, but to the naked eye there are very faint purplish-gray stains starting to become visible. In the real world, there's usually not time to allow the prints to develop at room temperature. Development is greatly accelerated at high temperatures and humidity. The most common way that forensics technicians produce these conditions is simply to make a sandwich of the treated specimen with a damp paper towel and then use an ordinary clothing iron to press the sandwich until the prints appear. If the developed prints are light or low contrast, you can retreat the specimen with ninhydrin solution or blank solvent to intensify them. So let's go ahead and iron our prints and see if that improves the appearance of them. I'll 
I'll start with an old towel just to protect the work surface. And then a layer of paper towel. And the specimen itself. And a damp paper towel that we'll place directly on top of the specimen. You don't want it dripping, but you do want it wet enough that the heat of the iron will produce some steam. And then yet another paper towel on top of the sandwich. Now, let's go ahead and just iron the sandwich. And what we'll find is that a process that can take hours to a day or more at room temperature will take place in just a minute or two at elevated temperature. You can lift up the top part of the sandwich periodically to see how development is proceeding. Oh yeah, maybe visible now. We're already getting some real intense, more intense purple stains. So let's continue the development. Incidentally, another method that forensic scientists use is to place the sandwich in a uh, convection oven or a microwave oven or even just a, a kitchen oven and maintain it at high heat and humidity for several minutes. Okay, I've heated the sandwich for another minute or two, so let's peel up the top layers and see what we have. Well, as you can see, the formerly latent fingerprints are now distinctly visible as purple stains. You probably can't see it on the video, but there's a great deal of ridge detail present in these stains. For more information about developing latent fingerprints with Ninhydrin, see Forensics Lab Session 8.3 in the Make Science Room. As we've seen, Ninhydrin treatment is extremely effective for visualizing latent fingerprints on porous surfaces. If neither iodine fuming nor Ninhydrin development reveals latent prints, the next step is to use either physical developer or silver nitrate in a final attempt to develop the latent prints. Either of these methods is destructive, so if they fail, there's nothing more to be done with that specimen. If you want to try silver nitrate development on your specimen, you'll find complete instructions in Forensic Lab Session 8.4 in the Science Room. In the next video, we'll take a look at superglue fuming, the most common method used to visualize latent fingerprints on glass and other non-porous surfaces.